what we have here is a 1919 Hercules three horsepower stationary engine. It's uh, so it's uh, 2020, so it is 101 years old, and it's a it's a, a hit or miss style engine. And I thought I would talk a little bit about it and why I think it's cool and why I think it's fascinating. It's single cylinder. And the cylinder is right under this water hopper. The water hopper has some water in it. That is the cooling that it gets. And right up here, this oiler, this little drip oiler, drips oil down onto the cylinder. There's a little sight glass. And every so often, a little drop of oil drop down. And that oil goes down this pipe and lubricates the top of the, of the piston coming in and out of the cylinder. Here's the end of the connecting rod, moving the crankshaft. And if you look, there's a gear on the side of the crankshaft, which is turning your cam gear right there. You can kind of see the cam loads on that. And then that cam gear is actually turning another little gear that is spinning a governor. And the governor there has the weight that is spinning kind of blurry there. And if you look, the cam gear has a little roller follower. And that's the follower on the push rod. And so what happens is that push rod is held forward until the speed of the engine declines enough, in which case the, uh, the roller goes back to push against the cam, and then the cam operates the exhaust valve, which makes a stroke. So this push rod, with this bar right here, and you kind of see forward and move back and there's a little a little ta tab here this is your latch out bar so if you kind of look from the top that latch out bar hooks onto a little piece of metal to hold that push rod open and then when that latch out bar moves away it, it allows the push rod to go back and in fact that latch out bar is operated by that plunger governor. So I don't know if you can really detect the movement in the video, but as the governor weights slow down, that little, that little rod will retract into the gear a little bit. The latch out bar will unlatch from the push rod. That push rod operates the exhaust valve right here. The exhaust valve is the lower valve on the head. And so when that push rod is in the extended position, or the latched position, it holds the exhaust valve open. And when it holds the exhaust valve open, there's no compression. And when there's no compression, it allows it to, uh, to freeweave. And then when the speed gets low enough, it closes the exhaust valve, which creates a suction stroke. So it pulls fuel in through the little carburetor here that gets sucked in through the intake valve and then it's compressed by the piston and then ignited by the magneto. This is a Webster magneto here. And then magneto is actuated by a little bar on the push rod. And as it pushes it, it gives it a little flick, which generates a little bit of electrical spark, which then goes to the igniter, which is kind of the equivalent of a spark plug on the side of the cylinder here. And the spark ignites the, the fuel charge and gives it a power stroke. And then the power stroke gives it enough power to freewheel a little bit more. And the whole cycle repeats itself. So it just kind of hums along. Original paint, not much of it left, but a nice green. And of course, it's got a, uh, a pulley on the side of the flywheel here. The pulley would be for a belt to drive some sort of equipment, whatever equipment you wanted. A rock crusher, or a corn thrasher, or a grain mill, or a water pump. 
whatever was your need. Alright, I'm going to uh, turn it off for a minute here by shutting the fuel, shutting the needle valve, there's a needle valve to the carburetor. So with no fuel, there's nothing there to run it, and it will just spin down to a stop. And I can show you some more of the, uh, the interesting parts on it. So, yeah, it's just mildly warm to the touch around the cylinder here. So, yeah, so the, uh, this little bar that actuates the magneto pushes a, a little, you know, lever on the back of the magneto. It actually does uh, uh, two things kind of at once. So it pushes the magneto. Let's see if I can spin this around to, to show you. When it gets to the point where it's ready to fire, it's going to push it. It's going to push it forward. And there's also a set of points inside the igniter. And that point set will open up on the rebound of the magneto stroke. So what happened is on that first click, this part of the magneto uh, rotates. And this is a horseshoe magnet with uh, copper windings inside, so it creates an electromagnetic uh, pulse of electricity, which is then transmitted through the wire to the, to the igniter, or to the points, and then this little lever here, this, this um, opens up the point gap just a little bit. So the points are closed, and so the, it's timed so that it opens up the point gap right when the spark comes. The spark bridges the gap, makes a little jolt of electricity that's really hot, and ignites the fuel. There's a, um, again, here's a better view of that latch out, that latch out bar that hooks on the, uh, on the push rod here. And um, let's see if we can get that in focus. And there's a little lever on the side here. So this lever is a kind of like a spring loaded tension for that latch out bar. And that's actually how you control the speed, the RPM. And here's that, the, those governor weights right here. And this governor waits again, push that little pin behind the gear there. And there's that, that cam lobe with the follower. Yeah, so that's pushing for an exhaust stroke. Like that. Um, we've got the oil, the grease cups. So these little, these little cups here are um, full of grease. Bunch of grease there and so what you do is as uh, as it runs every so often you know you you, you give it a, a tightening a quarter turn tightening and it squeezes more grease through a little hole to lubricate the uh, the bearings so of course these two are the the main crank bearings on either side and then your connecting rod has one as well right down here and then there's a little one for the, uh, the governor it's pretty cool how on the, uh, get past the compression here, on the back stroke, you know, the, the piston comes all the way out of the cylinder a little bit. And then goes back in. A little gas tank is, um, is in the base. There's the little, just a little flap for the gas tank. And the gas tank is just, um, this is a little like check valve, so the gas gets sucked up into the carburetor, and, uh, but doesn't flow all the way back, so there's fuel, you know, in the line ready to be sucked in by the carburetor. And this little pet cock is the drain for the water reservoir, the water hopper. The, uh, the valves, so this bottom valve is the exhaust valve, which is operated by the, the rocker arm for the push rod. And the top one is the intake valve, which has a, a pretty light spring. And this spring here, this is actually kind of a, a lockout. So what it's supposed to do is when the exhaust valve is pushed open, 
this little seesaw, this little bar seesaws and kind of helps hold the intake valve closed. So the intake valve can't be sucked open while the exhaust valve is open. And you've got the, uh, the little muffler, the little pancake muffler. And you've got the, uh, the choke. The choke, you just move this little flap in front of the, the carburetor. And that's the choke for it for starting. And, uh, you know, it's not, I think it's technically not even called a carburetor, it's called a mixer, a fuel mixer, because that's all it does, it does is mixes fuel and air. And there's its little placard. So I said it was a Hercules before, uh, Hercules owns Saxon. So this, it's a Saxon, three horsepower. There you have it, 101 year old engine. Let's see if we can start it back up.